It's all talk. Hey, 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 it's all talk. Hey, hey, it's all talk. It's all talk. Hawk talk, spread diversity. Gonna make it happen for the students is our destiny. This is how we better IUP and community. Hawk talk, bring the culture together, it's like community. Inclusively, we work together better as one. Let's make a change and do it big and get the mission done. It's Hawk talk, so make sure that you tell somebody. We gotta stay connected, educate everybody. It's Hawk talk, hey, hey, it's Hawk talk. Talk, talk, hey, hey, it's Hawk talk. Talk, talk, hey, hey, it's Hawk talk. and welcome to Hawk Talk News. I'm Taylor Jones. And I'm Anaya Pinckney. Here's the latest news that's going on around IUP's campus and other current events. Take Back the Night will be happening Wednesday, April 11th, 2018. It's a march done across the nation to raise awareness and show support for survivors of sexual violence. The march will begin at 8 p.m. Afterwards, the Speak Out will take place in the Hub Ohio Room, which serves as a safe and supportive forum for survivors to tell their stories. All are welcome, and advocates will be on hand for those who may need them. IUP had its annual Research Appreciation Week. This week spotlights the spirit of innovation and collaboration shared by all disciplines. Research Appreciation Week showcases the outstanding research done throughout the year by our students and faculty. Some of the highlighted events are the Undergraduate Scholars Forum and Graduate Scholars Forum. This offered students a chance to present their research or performances. This is a battle that could shutter some classrooms indefinitely. Thousands of teachers returned to their Oklahoma capital and Oklahoma City to protest low teacher pay and years of cuts to school funding. Teachers are demanding that state legislators come up with $3.3 billion over the next three years for school funding, benefits, and pay raises for all public employees. But lawmakers didn't give an inch. Teachers haven't gotten a raise in 10 years. April 4th marks the 50-year anniversary of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination. Mary Ellen Ford, a witness to the aftermath of the shooting at the Lorraine Motel, recounts her shock for the first time. In the footnotes of this case, Ford is referred to as witness number 43. She was tasked with delivering hamburgers to King's room. During the Today Show interview, she recalled seeing King laying in his bed smoking a cigarette. Ford says that when she returned to the kitchen, she heard a loud burst ring out. She soon came to see King laying on the balcony. Ford is seen in a famous photo after the shooting wearing white clothes with her arms folded across her waist. This is the first time Ford has opened up about this in decades. A Texas teen applied to 20 of the best universities in the U.S. and was admitted to every single one of them with a full scholarship. Michael Brown, who's 17 and a senior at Lamar High School in Houston, got into schools including Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Stanford, and Georgetown. Michael plans to major in political science and hopes to one day become a lawyer. Three people were shot at the YouTube headquarters in Northern California Tuesday. Officials say that the shooter was a woman. According to San Bruno Police Chief Ed Barbrini, the woman was found at the scene and appeared to have killed herself with a handgun. The shooter is believed to have known at least one of the victims. She was mad at the social platform for filtering her videos and reducing the money she could make. One 36-year-old man was in critical condition, one 32-year-old woman was in serious condition, and one 27-year-old woman was in fair condition. Victory Christian Assembly was packed with IEP students and members of the Indiana community on Easter Sunday, and Anaya got the chance to talk to Pastor Jenkins on this holy holiday. Here is the story. Easter is a Christian holiday that celebrates the belief in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and many people went to church to celebrate, and the word was spoken by Pastor Melvin Jenkins, the founder of Victory Christian Assembly, and he got to talk about the turnout his church experiences on Easter. And some Easter bonnets. These are times that are set aside in the Christian calendar for such celebrations and 
and, and that kind of thing. And so a lot of people that feel like they're obligated or it's important to you know at least express your religion during these particular religious holidays. But um, yeah, we do notice a great increase at certain times <laughs> of the year. So which um, holiday would you say Victory gets more people? For Victory, it's definitely Easter. Easter. Um, because of the fact that um, Christmas time, of course, the students are mostly gone. Mm -hmm. um, we do get some people that do come at Christmas time, but uh, the larger crowd is definitely Easter. Plus the fact um, for Victory at Easter, it means food. And mm. uh, that always helps. Mm -hmm. College ministry has brought Pastor Jenkins closer to Christ, so therefore he decided to pursue preaching. And so what has happened is I believe that um, I'm walking in my calling. I believe that I was called to work with college students because it was college ministry that actually brought me into a closer relationship with Christ. I, uh, I came to really get a close understanding of who God was in my life as a result of a college ministry when I was in school at Penn State. And uh, since that time, I felt the need to really work with that population of people. I feel like it's really important that college students are reached at this age. This may be the last chance to really touch lives before they get bogged down or encumbered with the cares and worries and bills that go on with uh, older life. So um, I think that we remain relevant because we are a campus ministry and we don't have any desire to be anything but a campus ministry. And so because of the fact that we are a campus ministry and only want to be a campus ministry, um, God is able to c kind of regenerate us every year, renew us, and now we're actually working with young people, students that are children of students that we worked with in the past, wow. which is fascinating to me. That's amazing. Yes, it is. From this point forward, you can be on the lookout for Victory Future Endeavors. We're going to be looking to uh, make some connections. Um, we already started the process of working with uh, Bethel Northeast in Philadelphia. Uh, we're going to be inviting Pastor Tim from that church to come up and speak at Victory. Um, before this semester is over so that students will be able to have a contact when they go home for the summer or over breaks when they you know that's just Philadelphia we also want to outreach uh, in some other cities where the students are coming from um, so for the rest of the semester there's also um, I think there's a workshop on some natural oils for natural hair mm -hmm. I don't know anything about that but people that have <laughs> hair uh, and want natural oils there's a workshop this coming Saturday about that um, actually creating some natural oils from one of our African sisters and um, there's a uh, women's empowerment workshop coming up soon. Um, we'll probably do something else with uh, a meal or something so we can have kind of a going away fellowship before everybody leaves. Um, so that's the plans between now and I guess Mother's Day. For those that are interested in being a part of Victory, the door is always open. Well, we're always looking for um, gifts and talents. We're always looking for people that have uh, giftings, whether it be in song, um, spoken word, mind, dance, um, the, the, you know, the sky's the limit. Uh, I would encourage anyone that's interested or wants to express themselves or find out if they have talent to, um, to reach out to me. Um, you can obviously get a hold of me on campus or uh, through social media. Um, you can also reach out to Bryant. Um, many, many people know Bryant Pinder, um, his wife Jasmine, or my wife, Sister Lael. Any of us uh, would be happy to talk to you uh, and kind of you know work you into whatever we need to do. But but we're always looking for people that are willing to express themselves and use their gifts um, to the glory of God. If you're interested in wanting to be a part of this church, they can be found on various social media platforms. Students can reach us at the following locations: Facebook Victory Christian Assembly, Twitter at Victory PJ, Instagram at Victory PJ. YouTube channel is on deck, so stay tuned. If you would like to attend Victory's church service, it's on Sundays at 11 in the morning. I'm Anaya Pinckney, reporting for Hawk News. 13-year-old boy Jesse Hernandez was found alive on Monday after falling into a massive drain pipe. Officials say he was washed into a network of Los Angeles sewers for at least 12 hours. Hernandez fell through a wooden plank on Sunday during an Easter celebration at Griffith Park. Los Angeles Fire Department says more than 100 rescue officials searched for him. Hernandez opened up about this experience during an interview on the Today Show that aired on Tuesday. He was taken to a local hospital and has since been released. Well, that's all we have for today. Thank you all for joining us this evening. We'll see you next week. But stay right there. Up next is Hawk Hour. 
Hey guys, I'm Haley. I'm Kane. Hi, I'm Haley, and you're watching Witticism. You're watching Witticism. And you're watching Witticism. Hey guys, I'm Mercedes. And I'm Brandon. And we're your hosts for ENB's TV and Movie News. Each week we bring you the latest news on what's up and coming in television and movies. We also bring you the latest news in the film industry along with the box office top five every week. Tune in every Tuesday at 10 p.m. on IUP TV Channel 20. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at ENB underscore IUP TV. And check us out on Facebook for weekly updated behind the scenes photos. We hope you'll tune in next week for an all-new episode of Entertainment News Break. Hello, and thank you for tuning back in. I'm Brooke. I'm Nyjah. I'm Caitlin. I'm Anaya. So, we can all see what's going on in today's world, and it's really unfortunate that a lot of these shootings are happening such as the school shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, and at the YouTube headquarters. This has raised a lot of questions about safety, guns, and the psychology behind these attacks. So the first question is, you know, are these shootings becoming more common? Do you Definitely. Think? Definitely. Yes. Yeah. It's, been cra it's been a crazy year within like the past six months. Mm -hmm. I feel like lately, ever since the Parkland shooting, it's been, there's been so many more shootings, like, the happening. Vegas like, shooting. Lot. Yeah, like, it's just becoming more, like, more of a more thing that's in our today's media and everything, and it's sad, like, honestly, I don't want to have to worry about going to school or, like, going out to Target or something, getting shot, like, it shouldn't, I shouldn't have to go out and, like, have fun and then worry about my safety anywhere I go, you know what I mean? Like, it's a sad thing. Yeah, it's like, when you don't even know the number of shootings now, it's like, that's when it's kind of like, yeah. it's not good. That's what's <laughs> scary, because they don't report on every single school shooting. So the ones that we're seeing is like, major, I guess, but there's like probably so many more. It's, there's it's a really scary. Yeah. yeah. We talk about it in my class, and she was like showing us the list of school shootings that happened, wow. and there was a lot of within the past few months. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. On that note, do you think people are losing their faith about safety in their schools and workplaces? I do. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, you could be anywhere and a mass shooting can happen. It, exactly. And that, that's matter. so scary. Like, what I said before, we're just going out and trying to have fun and live our lives. And like, yeah. you yeah. shouldn't have to worry about if worrying if your last day is the day you wake up. Like, yeah, I'm like going places looking for exits everywhere. I go. I'm like, <laughs> looking oh, for spots. Yeah. <laughs> like, see, that's the problem. We shouldn't have to be paranoid about anything. Mm -hmm. Like, that's yeah, no, that is not okay. We gotta, we gotta be do better. Like, about doing your everyday thing, like waking up and going. Yeah, to school. going to yeah. school. Yeah, like, like, I have to be scared to go to school. That's that's unacceptable. It's really a shame. So is it necessary for teachers to be armed with guns in schools to have metal detectors now? Um, me personally, I don't think that's, that teachers should have guns. I mean, I yeah, that's, like that's extreme. extreme. That's, that's very extreme. extreme. <laughs> like, what if we have like that crazy teacher that I have one. one. I have one. Like, listen. And then like, what if one day like a kid makes him really mad and he's just like, all right, like. Listen, yeah, I what? had a few teachers that I know would pull out guns <laughs> yeah, real true. fast. That is not okay. If that's every not teacher okay. has a gun at this point, you got to worry about the crazy teachers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's more work. And the metal detectors, that's kind of the norm. That's like where I'm from. My high school had a metal detector. Or I so. didn't mind it. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. I feel like I heard they're like trying to get like see through back through backpacks now to like see through backpacks. That's ugly. Yeah. That's so <laughs> sad. What about our privacy? Yeah, like I feel like there's different ways about going about safety than having guns for teachers to have guns yeah. and stuff like that. Maybe one central gun like locked up in the office or something. Yeah. Like, every be, teacher. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know about that. Them. How about we just like up security maybe, you know, the yeah. school police, maybe the they be on deck. Or but like yes. say if there is a crazy kid in your school and he knows that every kid or every teacher has a gun like there's a possibility that they can like get into where the teacher Kids has a gun easy. like mm -hmm. they know how to crack so, anything yeah like <laughs> it's just bad it's just really bad you gotta that's do a good better idea. Yeah. Mm. well that's all the time we have for hawk hour thank you for watching if you want to give your opinion on the discussion we just had make sure you tweet us at iup hawk talk see you later Bye. Bye. <laughs> 
Here at The Big Hit, we have a ton of passionate analysts. It was really good while it lasted, but it's really starting to become a problem. Anyone that didn't trust the process is an idiot. Sam Hickey died for our sins. Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, Markel Fultz is back. We're going to the playoffs, baby. We're back. We're about to win the championship. Sam Hickey died for our sins. Darnell. Thank you. That's it. The Trust show's the over. of passion my weekend's gone in a flash and i just don't know what happened send me postcards from where you're staying tonight call me up once or twice to let me know you're all right pack of empty cigarettes babe you're on my mind i can't forget the sweet sweet sound of that golden sunset Good evening and welcome to What's Poppin'. We will be bringing you the latest celebrity news, trends, and gossips. We're your hosts. I'm Maya. I'm Amelia. And I'm Tyler. And I'm Swaggy J. <laughs> For these week's brawls, we have Black China fighting at Six Flags, then rapper Fabulous and his girlfriend Emily B. So, on Easter Sunday, you guys may have saw the video of Black China swing a miniature car stroller at Six Flags. She was upset because a park patron was trying to touch her kids. Do you think it's appropriate for her to be fighting in public? Not at all. I think it's not right. First of all, I, don't like it. I just want to say I heard it's actually because they said her boyfriend was a kid. Like I heard they that were too. talking about he's too young. Definitely so, yeah, yeah. if that's the case, no, you can't be acting like that because you're a grown woman. Like you got a reputation to uphold. Right. You can't be just throwing baby strollers around. I well, if it was about her child, then yes, don't invite that child. Mm -hmm. But if it was about her boyfriend, then no. I think it was about her child. Well, she, 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 she needs to calm it down. Like, like, it's been a rough couple of weeks nice for Black China. Okay, <laughs> like <laughs> girl, reel it in. It's been a bad year. For real. So, also, the rapper Fabulous has allegedly abused his on and off again girlfriend, Emily B. He has threatened her and punched her so bad in the face that she ended up losing her two front teeth. He also threatened her brother and her dad. He's being charged with aggravated assault and could face three to five years in state prison. So, what's y'all's opinion on that situation? He didn't do it. Free my man Fab, dog. <laughs> Free my and man that's Fab. a mess. Like, honestly, I don't agree with anybody putting their hands on anybody, but Listen. I feel like. I don't know, it's like that fault. video was just a little too, she was a little too shook for me. Like, she stole, she stole 300K from my man. But how you know that? We don't that's know foul. that though. His how? brother said it. Well, his brother said it? Yes. His, that means he's on his side, so you what could you be mean? getting that side. What True. you mean? He's, no, no, not at all. Your family's gonna do anything to justify Listen, the situation. Though. Exactly. Oh. Free fed. Well, I don't know the backstory, and I don't like speaking on domestic violence situations when you don't know the backstory. Exactly. Because you get a false idea of what happened and then somebody ends up being the exactly. villain and another person is the victim and mm. it could be the other way around. Right. But you know what I think though? Just based off of that video that we saw, she's just running from him. Like she's scared. He's not even like coming at her with his fist up she and she's was, running. She was next she was. to the she was next to the passenger side. She was standing next to him the whole time. It was, but then she, she started running though. And she that ran means off, but then she came something. back. She came back. So she knew who was up. She wasn't scared. I think she came back though because she was recording and she was trying to catch him in a in a case. Because she was trying to get my man booked. I'm seeing Emily B. Sis is on it. She, she knows. Run. That's out of pocket. <laughs> Well, um, in other news, the singer Tamar Braxton usually has um, a long blonde wig on, but recently she decided to shave all her hair off. Is the haircut a good look on her? Absolutely not. Um, I don't approve of it. She looks like... She's like a naked, she like a naked mole rat. Oh she my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm naked. But like... I see what she was trying to do because there was another mm -hmm. person who shaved Sanaya Lathan. 
So not lately. Yeah, yeah she she recently shaved her hair off. So she I think she was trying to like she bad with it. Come build on, not a trend, bad. but it wasn't really working out for her. First of all, I think she's like she how old is she to head, be though. doing that? Like I don't, I don't know. know. Probably like it just she's I like it, she any hairstyle. I feel like I don't know. Like you have to have a, a f certain face to pull it off. You know. Sure. Um, I. She got kneecap for I it. like that it was a bold <laughs> statement. <laughs> Shut up. I mean, I'm just saying. Um, it was a bold statement, and it takes confidence to do that. So I have to applaud her for that. And you That's never know. Saying. With black women, you know, you put relaxers and stuff mm. in your hair, and she could have did it for that reason. She might have needed to start her hair. Yeah. She still got She could have still got a shorter cut. She still got pieces of hair on top of her head, though. That's <laughs> wrong. She, wanna... she just needed to shape up, you know. <laughs> she had to clean it up. Yeah. I, I'm proud of sis, know. like, making her move at an old age. Like, most women that's older, they be wearing wigs and stuff. She's not afraid. She just going to... Do be free. I like that. Go to go to more, you know? Be yourself. Be yourself. <laughs> Recently, a man named Tyrone Hankerson Jr. was caught in Howard University's financial aid scandal and was blamed for stealing 429000 in funds. He's been in social media flaunting furs, designer handbags, jet setting to exotic destinations. <laughs> but he claims it's all lies and his mom just taught him how to ball on a budget. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't no way. What? Ain't no when way. Howard students heard about this incident, they went to the financial aid office and sang Rihanna's, you know, better have my money. How would you react if someone was stealing your financial aid? Piss. That's foul. Piss. Super foul. Like, Piss. first of all, balling on a budget. You're already getting all this bread anyway. Boy, like, like the furs, the, the you like, ain't. come on. Mm -mm. You, you got enough you for gotta, that. You got, that's any lie to make up. He like. crafty. I give him that. He's super crafty. I'm confused, though, because did y'all watch the interviews, like, of him talking afterwards? I didn't see He was kind of talking like, oh, I have so much sympathy for everyone in the financial aid. Like, I was doing stuff to help the students. So I'm just trying to get his mindset on how was you stealing $429,000 helping, helping the students? Right, like, like maybe he had what? a plan. Maybe he was Ponzi scheming to have it aside was trying, for He him. was trying to feed the needy. Yeah, he was trying to give Robin Hood, you know? Maybe, possibly. Maybe. I don't know, somebody stole my money. I don't care for any reason. Yeah, I'm, I'm that's a problem. Pissed. I don't care I if you plan on flipping off, it, giving it, it back to me, I'll no. I'll be teed off. I'm yeah. all there. Right. Bogus, right. right. Hey man, I don't get financial aid anyway though, so. Uh, right, I'm true. I'm gonna get all mine in loans. Right, right. Yeah. take them. For real. <laughs> okay. Well, that's all the time we have for now, so make sure to tune in to the next episode to see more celebrity news. We'll see you later. And bye. Hey, bye. bye. <laughs> Mike, I do have to say you look nice today. <laughs>
Tickets are $25 with your iCard. This ticket includes a ride to the PNC Park, the game ticket, concessions credits, a ball cap, and fireworks. Go pick up your ticket today at the KCAC box office. That's all the upcoming events I have for you now. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Y'all see it. Alright, y'all. How y'all think the uh, table and event went today? Yes, y'all. Y'all feel like a good outcome? Yes, okay. Y'all ready for the new people, new semester? Okay, Taylor, you all right? Say hug talk. Say hug talk. That's right, Jay. Say hug talk. Hey, hey, say hug talk. This is some good life. It is lying. Yes.